Hey, this is Mike. We got a couple guns here. Um, just going to go through real quick and do a little air gun chit chat. So give me a second to put myself where I need to be long in the frame. So we have a um, Hudson 95 that I bought, and that was basically bought for parts. I have um, two Turkish Tomahawks that I've been doing the projects on, and we're getting somewhere finally. So, unfortunately, I needed some parts for that. And um, in order to get the part, I had to order the Hatson 95. This is a .22 refurb. And um, so I needed the barrel block out of it. So the Hatson 95 and the Turkish Tomahawks are the same guns, except the stocks are different. And obviously the front brake's different, but in order to get a barrel block, you can't get them. So I ordered a gun in a refurb and the rest of the gun I'll just use for spare parts the quadro trigger and whatever however it works but I got the barrel block and this 22 barrels coming out of course and the barrel block is going to be used for the Tomahawk project and I have the custom barrel for that but so anyway that's why we have the 195 here and let me just put this gun away on the side here but to my surprise I saw in the box this little piece of paper. Now, this is the first time I've ever seen it, but it's an inspection paper for a refurbed air rifle. So it has the date, the ca it has the make and the model, the serial number, has the technician name on the slip, and it basically has a checklist of different things that they were supposedly have checked before this had shipped out because in the past I've gotten refurbs where the, nothing was done to them you know the humans it's like a refurb it was a, a pro problem with the gun that they threw back in a box and sold it but anyway um, this one says uh, they checked for cracks so that's been checked off there's no cracks no major damage to the stock the scope rail slash receivers okay stock screws are tight um, it says open sights and it says barrels okay so i'd like to know what did they do to find that out but anyway we're not even going to use the barrel on this i'm just needing it for the barrel block but i'm going to clean that barrel and i'm going to check and see if that barrel is indeed okay but anyway um so larry i'm going to find out see if you did your job that's the name on the ticket. So then it gets down to the function. It says cock and strokes okay, safety functions okay, trigger functions okay, and the firing cycle is normal. Well, this should say firing cycle has the piston slam. It's normal. Yay. <laughs> anyway, now it has an interesting thing here. 10 yard group with the hats and USA specifications. specifications. It says. The 10 shot average feet per second was 773. So you are shy on the feet per second there, Larry. You are 773. You're supposed to get 800 feet per second. At any rate, um, that's pretty cool. I'm just having a little fun here. I'm glad to see this. This is great. If they're really doing this, well, then I thumbs up for that. But anyway, the other gun we have here is the Hatson 135. Now, I already have one. And I bought it, I don't know, I bought it, it was on sale, the other one I had, and it came out as a Vortec gas ram, which I didn't want. And I have a Mike Sayers barrel that's going to go in that gun. And that was probably a 177 that I got real cheap, and I didn't buy it for the purpose of having a 177. I bought it for the purpose of rebarreling it with a custom barrel, because 9 out of 10, the barrels aren't going to be all that. Now, I do get occasionally guys telling me, hey, I have five to ten hats, and every single one of them are fantastic. They're all shooters. Everything's great. Well, I got to tell you, dude, you are in the elite status. You are very lucky. Um, no, but it's a 50-50 deal, actually, if you get a good barrel or a bad barrel, unfortunately. Do they have the means to make a really good barrel? Absolutely. But the problem comes down to the QC, the quality control. But anyway, let's get off the subject here. Let's get back on track. So we have another 135. 
And now the other 135 that I had came out as a Vortec Ram. It was supposed to be a Springer and I had all intentions of transforming that into a Springer and putting that Mike Sayers barrel on. But now that I have another one, and this one did come out as a Springer. We'll just keep this as a Springer. We're going to put another TJ barrel on this one too. This one is actually a 177. I didn't buy it again for the caliber. I bought it for the gun. These guns are supposedly not going to be made anymore. It says uh, that's what the deal was. So I got it for 177 shipped or 170 shipped. I think the shipping was actually five bucks from hats in usa when i sat there and i thought about it it's like geez you know am i going to regret not having another 135 you know how this stuff goes you're just addicted if you don't do it then you're going to wish you did and blah 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 so i jumped on it and i grabbed another one so now i'll have the 135 and a tj barrel which has a tapered bore and a 0.25 caliber and then i will have this one done i'll have to order that barrel later for it and push the project down the line when its turn comes around and we'll put a 0.22 caliber for this gun but the 135 is a uh, really big gun so now they're coming out with a 30 calibers um, now, I don't care to go up to a 30 caliber per se for myself. 25 is where the where I stop. But a lot of guys are kind of getting into those um, 30 caliber guns. Now, the one thing about the 135 is I don't I like the way it's designed right off the bat. I don't like those other ones that they came out with with the adjustable cheek. Uh, I mean, it gives you a different design, something new, and I understand that, right? Change it up, put a little uh different handbrake on that with the what is it the qe they call it but this is i rather have the less bells and whistles i like this the the uh, cheek freeze uh, rest that you already have i don't care for the adjustable stuff i never use the adjustable rest not in a magnum the screws are going to probably come loose anyway but anyway i'm glad i have one the 135 is a big gun but look what what the deal is with these air guns is if you're addicted to the sport and i know you are um and if you like your magnums then you're probably going to want to have to have one why not um but um, i just thought that was quite interesting so as far as the other projects concerned that's finally getting somewhere i just ran into some issues and i had to order another 95 just to get some parts for that project and then I saw that slip in the refurb, and I thought, boy, that was interesting. So this week is, I'm really in a good mood. Today's Sunday. I'm enjoying my weekend off. There's just, uh, this weekend's mine. I got some stuff to wrap up, including the camper, but I'm very happy. I'm feeling good, and I thought I'd do a video. So this week is actually a little special. I do have a FWB 124 coming this week. Unfortunately, I had to sell the one I had when we ran into a little bit of an issue of losing our job, and um, that was not fun, and it really was quite irritating but i'm happy now i got a great job i love my job i'm thankful for my job i love my work and i love to work and we're back on track so i'm just feeling good and i thought i'd throw another video out and throw these two guns in there and for the guy that doesn't like to watch uh, the guns and all that stuff because you know i'm not actually shooting the gun or we're not hitting you know we're not making a hollywood film here just don't torture yourself. Give yourself a break. Go take a couple ivory pro friends and chill out. But anyway, hey, this is Mike saying I hope you have a good air gun day. Take care and be safe and um, enjoy your sport. Thanks. And Scooter, you just want to play all the time. Well, we're doing air gun stuff. We can't be playing. I'm sorry.